What's up, guys? My name is Evan Sarakis, and welcome to the NYC Hoop School Podcast. I'm so looking forward to bringing this podcast to all of you because it's been too long of a time coming. We've been building our online presence, pushing out tons of content, and I look forward to building this relationship with all of you to help you understand our story, to talk about different concepts with the game, bring on tons of special guests, talk about different topics with our team of trainers. It's really going to be an amazing podcast and I can't wait to bring this all to you. Now with this podcast, what we're gonna be focusing on is how NYC Hoop School was created. We'll talk about my story, we'll talk about how NYC Hoop School was born, what we're doing present day, and the vision we have long term as a brand. To begin with, let's start with my story as a trainer. My story as a trainer really began as a freshman in high school when I was working out a friend who got cut from that freshman team. So come freshman year summer, I had a friend who got cut. He comes to me, he goes, hey, can you help me make this JV team next year? I said, let's do it. So we ended up together. We were working out every single day, um, whether it was you know, 90 degree weather, or it was raining outside, and or it was cold. We were just working out every single day. It was an amazing grind together. And he ended up making that JV team to the point where he actually ended up starting. I thought it was such an amazing process because not only am I improving as a player, but I'm bringing now a friend with me to develop as well. What this eventually led to was on that JV team, I would always try to now bring teammates to work out with me. I realized the value in working out with additional people. So whether it was my guy Lucas who ended up making that team or it was other teammates that I had, I was constantly bringing people around me. I'm improving my game, they're improving their game and it's this awesome process. What this eventually led to was just a complete obsession about player development. I started my freshman year really just trying to learn how to work out My sophomore year, I'm starting to get the hang of it a little bit. My junior year, I start diving into more education on how I could be making my workouts better. And that complete obsession led to 5 a.m. mornings every single day. I was working out by myself, trying to improve as a player. I'm bringing down teammates as much as I possibly could to improve their game as well. And what this ultimately led to was my first ever clientele that junior year summer. As most people start, I was doing the $20 workouts outside of the parks. Um, That eventually built through relationships and and more people kept on coming down. And I had a nice clientele my junior summer. Heading into my senior summer, we eventually decided that, well, let's start a business. So what happened was myself and my brother, we started a partnership where we began our first training business. With this training business, we already had some individual clientele we had, and then we tapped into our network a little bit, running a ton of free workouts. We were going to different AAU programs, we were hitting up as many people as we possibly knew, and we were just trying to get them exposure to basketball training. We did a good enough job at all these different free things that we were doing, and we ended up packing out our gym that summer with well over 50 clients, and it was just a very successful business overall. Now, as always, a couple of years goes by and COVID hits. Everything shuts down. And my brother and I, we didn't just sit down and and let the time go by. We really dove into our education. We dove into how to become better trainers. We were hiring different mentors. We were filming content. And so once COVID ended, our business doubled. We're providing more value to our clientele. There's pent up demand, kids want to get workouts in, and we were just ahead of the game. Now, as this business was growing, there's more stress, right? There's tons of players that come in, there's additional processes that you have to apply. And so what my brother and I ended up deciding to do is my brother became a full-time coach, and he's doing a very successful job doing that. And I decided to stay the course and be a full-time trainer. This is when I created NYC Hoop School. Once NYC Hoop School was born, I thought of it as just an online presence. 
it isn't what it is right now where we're running tons of clinics, events, and different things. It was just an online brand. So what was I doing? Well, I was filming my courses. I had a shooting course that I built, an off-season game plan course, a spacing course. I was continuing to film my curriculum, which eventually led to the NYC Hoop School app, and it was a fully online brand. Now, with that being said, this online content was brought back to my clientele that I already had. So for example, if I was working with a high school player, I would work with them one on one and then they would be able to go home, access the app or access the online course and now continue to learn that information, have a program to follow. And it ended up being an absolutely amazing process. In addition to that, I was building a following on social media. I was gaining experience with content. I was developing online business experience. I was becoming a better entrepreneur. And overall, it was an absolutely amazing experience. Now, as everything was going well, I just continued to film the app, create online courses, continue to build everything until one day I get a phone call from a coach and he goes, hey, um, I'm running these clinics every Saturday. Can you help me out? And I go, sure. So I show up to the gym. I didn't know what to expect. And it was a gym of 40 players. And I'm like, dope, this is going to be fun. And so I ran the clinic. He absolutely loved what I was doing. And so we came to a deal where I would help him out with this clinics for free if he provided me a full week of gym time. Now with this full week of gym time, what I did is I said, okay, let me experiment with something. So I hit up different trainers in the industry. What I did was I hit up my guy, Ryan Kennedy from Grind City Training. I hit up Jamel Fair from Uncommon Hoops. I hit up Evan Chow from Supreme Hoops Training. I hit up Eric Dallas from Dojo Hoops. I hit up my guys, Austin Stoner and Brian Dominguez that were both with Train to Transfer. And right then and there, there was a team of trainers that just collabed to deliver the best experience possible for one full week to players. And what we decided to do is for that full week, we said, okay, we've got eight hours a day. Let's deliver the best experience possible. We experimented with different structures. So for example, what we did was we would start every single day with a prime time and we would have them go through performance training. We then would do stations with all our trainers. We'll do team concepts to develop their IQ. We would always have a lunch break. And then we would go into the second half of the day where we would play games. We would have a contest. We were doing so many things every single day and we would experiment each day. But the experience we provided to those players was absolutely amazing. And the conversation we had as a team after that camp was man, we, we really got something special here. We've just provided one of the best experiences of those players' lives, and all trainers got paid. Let's try to do something like this again. And so the following month, we did run an event. It was a four-hour event, so it wasn't a camp. We delivered a four-hour event to these players with a similar structure, and we absolutely crushed it. The players loved it. Trainers are getting paid, and I said, all right, We've definitely got something special here. Let's try to make this work. So what we did was we set a goal to run these events once a month. And what that eventually led to was, you know, we had our August camp, September event, October event, November, December, January. We kept on running these events to present day where now we're going to be doing more of these more often. We have a February break coming up. We'll be doing multiple events and clinics. We are now collabing with different AAU programs to help generate revenue for them. And we're really heading in the right direction as a brand. Right now, we, we have a core team of trainers. We're looking to continue to build that. And overall, NYCU Hoop School is heading in the right direction to make a serious impact on the game of basketball in New York. Now, with that being said, we do have a long-term vision of things we want to accomplish. For example, one goal we have as a brand is to give all players a platform and blueprint to reach their full potential. This could be as simple as providing players with an app with programs to follow over the offseason. It could be using our online courses of how they should be structuring their offseason. A mentorship with our trainers. We will also have our academies. 
our clinics, our events. And so now we're giving players a blueprint to reach their full potential. A second goal we have as a brand is to help trainers accelerate their business growth. So for example, each month, if we're running clinics and events and a trainer is down with us, well, you're getting extra revenue. That revenue can be used back for your business, for gym space. Maybe you want to invest it back into yourself. You'll also have more player exposure. You'll have gym space to run workouts. You'll have a network to tap into. So now as a trainer, you're able to accelerate your business growth. The third goal we have is to provide AAU programs, different youth leagues, coaches, not only a network to tap into from a trainer and player perspective, but also a vehicle to generate more revenue, right? So for example, what we're doing this February break is we're coming down to an AAU program. We are executing one of our events. We have a revenue split. And so now you're tapping into our network of trainers. We're coming down, we're generating revenue for your program heading into the AAU season. And it ends up being a win-win. Overall, we're really just trying to push this game forward. We're trying to help players. We're trying to help programs. We're trying to help coaches. We're trying to help everyone within this industry. And we truly are heading in the right direction as a brand. We have a long-term vision and we are coming to make this impact. Overall, we really look forward to bringing you along this journey. We know that there's going to be special things coming soon of our 2.0 drop of our app multiple opportunities to come down to clinics and events and so much more we look forward to bringing you along this journey and as always stay driven by results now at the end of each podcast we try to give you a execution tip so that you can improve as a player trainer coach or whatever it is and the execution tip for this podcast is to create a vision. We just talked about, as a brand of NYC Hoop School, our vision of how we want to push the game forward. As a player, as a trainer, as a coach, as a parent, what is your vision? Is your vision just to simply play college basketball? Is your vision just to dominate, you know, your area as a trainer? Is your vision as a coach to build an amazing program? Whatever vision you have, have that vision and have a plan to execute. Because if you can have a vision and a plan to execute, that's going to give you the best potential chance to achieve that goal. I look forward to seeing you in episode two and stay driven by results.